sure, this mineral is important for fat loss, but it's even more important because we're so deficient in it and it's important for fat loss. I'm going to cut right to the chase and tell you what the mineral is, but I'm also going to give you the playbook on how to add it into your life with foods, with proper supplementation, but of course we have to understand why it plays such a role because there are a bunch of different pieces with it that we need to understand. After today's video, I put a link down below for Sundays. I don't usually talk about dog food on this channel, but since I know a lot of my audience has them and I have three, I care about what I feed them. So Sundays is the world's only human grade dog food. So it's a veterinarian formulated. When I say human grade, that means that we as humans could literally eat it. It's the highest quality. So what they're using as far as like sweet potato, as far as the meat ingredients, it's all human grade. I mean, it wouldn't taste great for us to eat, but if we're literally wanting to feed our dogs the highest quality food, we want something like that. So it's air dried, it's super delicious. Like my dogs just devoured, especially our new puppy. So anyhow, that link is down below that saves you some moolah if you wanna try them out. So I highly recommend you use that link, save some cash and try Sundays for your pups. So I opened this with a study that was published in Diabetic Medicine because it's a huge paper. Took a look at over 24,000 people throughout six different studies. They found a very strong inverse correlation between magnesium intake and the risk of metabolic syndrome. And this isn't just a simple correlation. They were able to parse out a lot of confounders, parse out a lot of the data, and ultimately find that for every 100 milligram increase in dietary magnesium, there was a 17% decrease in the risk of metabolic syndrome. That means things like fatty liver, that means uh, poor glycemic regulation, insulin resistance, diabetes, that means visceral fat, all these things that are aligned with metabolic syndrome, not to mention weight loss as well, that's not officially part of metabolic syndrome. Obesity isn't officially part of it, but it's sort of a casualty of it, if you will. So with this, we have to dive into a study that was published in Nutrients to understand the mechanisms. Mechanisms are important. You have to look at big data like we just did, but then you have to understand how this works and how you should implement it into your life. So we look at data about vitamin D. Now vitamin D is really important for fat loss. So you could go out and you could take a synthetic vitamin D supplement, but the problem is that's synthetic. And I have some qualms about just saying, okay, willy nilly take in vitamin D from a supplement when it's not the real natural form. So vitamin D potentially encourages fat loss, but more than that, it decreases the formation of fat cells. Now, we might be wondering what this has to do with magnesium. Magnesium is required for vitamin D to be synthesized and to activate. So when we get vitamin D from the sun, it's not really active yet. It goes through multiple processes to become 25-hydroxy vitamin D. It cannot become this 25-hydroxy vitamin D until magnesium interfaces with it. So if we don't have magnesium, vitamin D is kind of worthless. So by taking magnesium along with sun exposure, we can actually allow vitamin D to potentially do its job better at stopping the formation of fat cells. But there's also other pieces that don't seem to get talked about a lot. For one, magnesium influences the gut bacteria significantly. It can alter the gut microbiome. So when we are deficient in magnesium, our microbiome seems to be so dysregulated that we have low-grade systemic inflammation happening, which ends up creating inflammation, obviously, is going to impede insulin from really docking to its receptor properly. So then we have insulin resistance and other issues that come as a downstream effect of that. The other piece that people overlook is that magnesium is required as a cofactor for like 300 different things in the body, one thing that's very important for is triggering the proper gene expression for beta cell formation. Beta cells are the cells that are in our pancreas that produce insulin. So now it all makes sense that if we're deficient in magnesium, yeah, it would make sense we're walking that line toward metabolic dysfunction or metabolic syndrome. So if you're trying to like rekindle your metabolism, magnesium might be one of the most important things. Let's talk how to implement it. So magnesium is best absorbed in small amounts. So your best bet is having magnesium taken in throughout the day. If you're getting it from food, things like legumes, things like avocados, things like seeds, any kind of deep leafy green kind of spread throughout the course of the day. There's a few different kinds of magnesium supplements you can add in. Okay, those are gonna be things like magnesium glycinate. That one is best taken at night because it'll help you sleep. It's bound to glycine, which helps have a calming effect on your body. 
I typically, for just generic magnesium throughout the course of the day, recommend about four to 500 milligrams of dimagnesium malate. I usually take it before bed to help me sleep, but a lot of times people have a better effect sprinkling it in throughout the day, like 200 milligrams in the morning, maybe 200 milligrams at night. That seems to be very, very effective. One of the things that I really should address though is that magnesium is so rich in leafy greens that perhaps by adding in more leafy greens, people are getting more magnesium and maybe that's why they're having such a positive impact because they're getting in more greens. So what I would recommend is focus on getting the magnesium from your greens and then adding in the magnesium glycinate or dimagnesium malate towards the evening time to help you sleep. Now, as a fun aside, you can have what's called magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate seemingly crosses the blood-brain barrier better, which means that it might impact your brain and allow your brain to feel a little bit calmer, which is going to have a huge influence on how you feel and obviously how you choose your food options too. So indirectly could make you, I don't know, lose weight by choosing better food. The bottom line is there's no denying that magnesium is important. There's no denying that we have a deficiency in magnesium when it comes down to our diet. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.